In this lecture, let's understand the real-time recording, also called as continuous recording. So the Sega system you supports uh, continuous recording in three ways. One is by using the J-Link based debug probe, or you can also achieve real-time recording using IP-based communication and also using the UART communication. If you want to use a J-Link based uh, continuous recording, then actually you need a J-Link based debug probe for this. But the Sager also gives you an application called ST-Link Reflash Utility. So by using which you can convert the onboard ST-Link firmware of your STM32 discovery board into J-Link firmware. So don't worry, you can reclaim that later. So there is one application which is actually given by the Sager. You can check at this link. So the application can convert ST-Link onboard into a J-Link. If you are using STM32 discovery board or uh, some of the STM32 nuclear boards, then uh, to achieve continuous recording over J-Link, you need not to arrange for any external J-Link based debug probe. You can convert the onboard ST-Link firmware into J-Link. But we'll not follow this method in this course because this is not so useful for us because when you remove ST-Link firmware, from the STM32 discovery board, then we won't be able to debug the application using STM32 cube IDE. We won't be able to uh, flash or uh, we won't be able to debug any code which is running on our board because the ST-Link firmware is remote. That's why in this course, we'll use a uh, real-time recording over the UART communication. This will be more helpful for us because we'll be able to achieve real-time recording as well as we can retain the ST-Link firmware and we'll be able to debug our application using STM32 cube ID. That's why in this course uh, for real-time recording, we'll be using UART-based communication between the host and the target. So to achieve the UART communication, we need a UART to USB uh, dongle. A converter is required because a PC doesn't support UART communication, isn't it? That's why we have to arrange for one UART to USB converter module. That's what we call virtual COM port communication, VCP communication. Please note that if you are using STM32F407X discovery board, then this board actually doesn't support onboard virtual COM port. So you need an external USB to UART converter module. But if you are using F446RE Nucleo board, the board actually supports the onboard virtual COM port. You don't require any external USB to UART converter module. So the STM32F407 discovery board doesn't support the virtual COM port support, which is actually mentioned in the user manual of the discovery board. You can just go to this section here. So you can go to this section, hardware and layout, just check this and just browse through this document. And here it is, they have mentioned this, virtual COM port configuration. So the ST-Link V2A, which is the ST-Link circuitry used in this board, it actually supports virtual COM port on U2 pin 12. But these pins are not connected to the USART of the STM32F407 microcontroller. This is a problem. Basically, the board supports virtual COM port over this chip. But that to work, the USART pins of the main microcontroller has to be connected to this secondary microcontroller, which is there in ST-Link circuitry. So, but that is not done in the STM32F407 discovery board. That's what written here. The pins are not connected. So they suggest two solutions here. One is you use UART to USB dongle, which you procured from the market, and you connect it to the PA2 and uh, PA3 pins of the microcontroller. Or you establish this communication between the primary microcontroller and the secondary microcontroller using uh, flying wires because the second solution actually needs you to solder the flying wires, which I don't recommend you to do. So if you are good at soldering, then you can go ahead and you can solder 
these two pins using a uh, flying wires so you may damage this microcontroller because it is very delicate soldering that's why i don't recommend the solution too you can instead buy one uart to usb dongle and uh, you can establish the virtual com communication so for this exercise i am going to use uh, ftdi 232 usb 2 ttl serial converter adapter which is very cheap you can get in any online electronic shops the module looks something like this otherwise you can use any uh, usb to ttl serial converter modules it need not be from ftdi it could be from other manufacturers as well so these are the uart pins this should be connected to the microcontroller and uh, this is a usb this you should connect to the pc's uh, usb port this module also comes with uh, its own usb cable so you can check this uh, online and uh, when you connect this module to the pc the pc uh, especially the windows 10 operating system automatically installs the driver for it you need not to install any driver but if it doesn't enumerate uh, this device then you may have to install the driver by visiting this location so i have this uh, module and now i'm going to connect this module to my computer i'll just connect it and i just connected this module and let me check the device enumeration in the device manager in the device manager you go to ports and you see here usb serial port the module has successfully enumerated you should see something like this a com number could be different but you should see something like this otherwise you have to install the driver for it now let's see how to connect this module to our stm32 discovery board very simple connection so you just have to use three pins from this module rx tx and ground the labels are provided over the pins you can check that so this is how the connection should be the tx pin of the usb to uart module should be connected to the rx pin of the stm32 discovery port the rx pin is nothing but pa3 pa3 you can get somewhere in this uh, expansion header and rx pin of the usb to uart module should be connected to the tx pin of the discovery board the tx pin you can get at a pa2 that is gpio port a pin number 2 after that the ground pin of the adapter should be connected to the ground pin of the stm32 discovery board only three connections after that what you do is you go back to your project and in the project just open third party segger and create a new folder here and call it as a recorder just type rec so now with this lecture i have attached one file a source file actually its name is seger underscore uart.c please download that and place that source file into this folder so seger uart.c this is a source code which enables uart based real time recording so after that what you do is just go to config and seger sysview conf.h go here and you see your segger uart recording this macro is set to 0 so just make it as 1 that is to enable the uart based recording that's it and after that what you do is go to source in the main.c so you have to initialize the uart because we are using the uart right so you have to initialize it for that what you do is after you enable the cycle counting here before calling this seger sysview configuration you just call this function seger uart init you just have to mention the baud rate here baud rate will mention 500k so to achieve a higher baud rate we also have to make sure that the peripheral runs with a higher peripheral clock frequency that's why what you do is go to your device configuration tool and here in the clock configuration make sure that you configure the h clock to its maximum value that is 168 megahertz for this microcontroller 
Just remove this 25 and type 168 and hit enter. So after that, just make sure that APB1 prescalar is set to 4 and APB2 prescalar is set to 2 because those two prescalars ensure the clock frequencies to the APB1 and APB2 domain within the limit of uh, 42 megahertz and 84 megahertz. That's it. Now let's save the code. So it generates the new configuration for clock. That's great. Let's go back to main.c. So we just added Sagar UART in it. And after that, Sagar sysview configuration, that's correct. After that, remove this Sagar sysview start because the starting is done in that file. The sysview start actually happens in the uh, Sagar UART.c. You can see that it happens right over here. So that's why you can remove this just comment this out and now let me just quickly check what our task handlers are doing they are just printing and then yielding the processor so let's test this with cooperative scheduling make sure that in the config.h the use preemption is set to zero all right Now let's build our project and let's flash it into the hardware. Now our ID is in debugging mode. What you do is just run your application. So let's just run. The code is running now. Now open the system view software. And this is the old trace. Don't worry about that. Just go to target and Select recorder configuration. Select the UART which got enumerated in your computer. I think for me it is 413. Just select that and select the baud rate 500k and click OK. And after that, go to target and start recording. Here it is. It recorded so many events and then it met with an overflow event. That's okay. Just close this and pause the recording or stop the recording. You can see that. So these are the events we actually received from our target. You need not to take any memory dump, nothing. You can see that. These events are actually being received from the UART communication. Try this at your desk and I'll continue in the next lecture. And for our future exercises, instead of taking single shot recording, we will be taking real time recording over UART. That's why some of the things you should remember here first of all, if you want to use the UART recording, then you should keep this file sagar underscore uart.c and after that in the sagar sysview conf.h you have to enable sagar uart recording just make it one and in the main.c you have to initialize the uart with the baud rate what you need just try with 500k and after that Sega sysview configuration and you need not to call this function Sega sysview start since we are using higher baud rates for our UART peripheral so it's better if you maintain a higher clock frequencies to the UART peripheral basically the UART peripheral falls under APP1 domain that's why you have to maintain a higher clock frequencies at that domain that's the reason why I used highest clock frequency for the H clock here. Just rise it to 168 megahertz. That's it. If you do this much, I think you should be able to get the trace over you want. For any reason, if you want to use the H clock at lower values, then you can do that, but you have to make some changes to the code. So let's say I want to maintain 
edge clock at uh, let's say 50 megahertz then you can do that you see here edge clock now becomes 50 megahertz and the bus clock of uh, APB1 is now running at 25 megahertz isn't it we are actually using user 2 in this application and user 2 actually connected to the APB1 peripheral domain if you want to use this configuration then you have to make some changes to the code go to the Sagar UR.C what you added to the project. Now, here you remember H clock 50 and APB 1 prescale are 2. Go to Sagar UR.C and here you should change this to 50 megahertz instead of 168. And after that, that's the first change you have to make. And after that, UR base clock is equal to this divided by 2. This prescalar you have to use too. You have to make that changes here. And after that, you should also know if the base clock becomes 25 megahertz, then what's the maximum baud you can achieve using the user peripheral? That you can check by going into the reference manual of the microcontroller. Here is the reference manual of the microcontroller, and I'm in section 30, UART. Just open that, and here there is a section called UART functional description, and here you can get fractional baud rate generation. Just click over that and just browse through this, and here you can see that the various baud rates which are possible with respect to the peripheral clock. Our peripheral clock now is. 25 megahertz let's check for 25 megahertz what could be the highest baud rate we can achieve there is no 25 megahertz but we can consider let's say 24 megahertz if it is 24 megahertz then we can achieve up to 3 Mbps. We actually used around uh, 500 kbps. That's how you can do modifications if you want. But for every project, I would like to maintain this at 168 megahertz. APB1 prescalar at 4 and APB2 prescalar at 2. Try this at your desk and I'll see you in the next lecture.